Hello everyone. Um, today we will discuss a very beautiful problem from geometry and its relation with golden ratio. Let's quickly talk about golden ratio first, the intuition behind it. So there is a positive number x, that's the starting point. We are searching for a positive number x such that if you flip x, that is if you find the compute one over x, or if you subtract one from x, that's x minus one, you get the exact same value, which basically says you can equate one over x with x minus one. And that is precisely what the golden ratio is all about. That positive number that you get if you uh, equate one over x with x minus one, and then you basically cross multiply x and solve the quadratic equation. And the value comes out to be square root of five plus one by two. And the computation is very simple. So maybe I can do it here. Um, it's you take x square minus x minus one equal to zero. So you take this one to the side and then you solve the value of x using the quadratic formula, also known as the Sridharacharya formula which is minus of negative one, that's minus b, plus minus square root of b square minus four times a times c over two. Of course, you get two values. You get one minus square root of five over two and one plus square root of five over two. You take the positive value because we are searching for such a positive number, which works. Now, mm, why would we, why, why, why are we interested in the positive number? Why the positive number is known as the golden ratio? There is a very beautiful video by 3B1 Brown. You can watch it in, uh, in the internet. Uh, but we will not discuss that today here because we want to quickly go over to our problem, which is golden ratio in a circle. Um, and this particular problem is from ISI entrance, but it also came in a previous Math Olympiad. What is this problem all about? But before we go to the problem, let's look at what we will learn in this particular video. We will first talk about the angle bisector theorem, which is a tool from geometry. It is discussed in our Math Olympiad geometry module, an ISI entrance geometry module. You can go in the link in the description or chinda.com to access those courses. Um, and then we will learn also about the extended Pythagoras theorem. So of course, for right angle triangles, we have Pythagoras theorem, but for non right angle triangles, we have the extended Pythagoras theorem, which is quite useful. And then of course, we talked a little bit about golden ratio. And finally, we will talk about the golden angle, which is, well, this is something I call the 36 degree angle as the golden angle because of its very special relation with the golden ratio. We will see that as well. But let's first talk about the problem itself. We want to find the golden angle. That's our goal. So what is the setup of the problem? The setup of the problem is like this. This is the picture. We have A, B, C, and there is an arc. The circular arc is there, and you can see the point X. So we say that let X be a point on a straight line AB. So AB is a straight line and X is a point on that straight line. X is a point on that straight line and segment. Such that AB times BX is equal to AX squared. So this is a technical condition. This is a technical condition that AB times BX is AX squared. We want to draw a circle with centered at A. So centered at A, we will draw a circle and with the radius AB. So we have this AC as also the radius. And we get a point C on the circumference such that if you take the length of CB and if you take the length of AX, both of those lengths are equal. So the two red lengths, BC and AX, both of them are equal in length. What we want to show with this given conditions, what we want to show this angle BAC right here, this angle right here, this is 36 degree. If these two are equal, and if 
um, we have this technical conditions, which is AB times BX equal to AX square. If all of this is true, then we want to show that angle BAC is 36 degrees. Now, like all beautiful problems, this problem is also a great learning opportunity. And we will start by learning the angle bisector theorem, which is very simple, actually. It's a property of angle bisectors of a triangle. So suppose ABC is a triangle such that CX bisects angle C. So you have a triangle ABC and you have the side CX and assume that CX bisects angle C. So this angle, if this angle is theta, then this is also theta. So CX is an angle bisector of angle C. That happens if and only if, now we have the condition that AC over BC is equal to AX over BX. Now, the way you should remember this result is that the ratio of the included angles, it's like a tent, right? In included sides, I'm sorry, AC and BC. The included angle, uh, included sides, which contain the angle bisector, sort of is angle bisector is in the middle. The ratio of AC and BC is equal to the ratio of the basis, which is AX over BX. That's how you should remember this. And there is a much better visualization of this that we discuss in our geometry module. There is a very intuitive way of thinking about this angle bisector theorem. And the proof of the angle bisector theorem is also very profound. I mean, it tells you a lot about how to solve this kind of geometry problems. But we cannot discuss the proof here. Um, we can access more resources like this in our website, of course. So that's the angle bisector theorem. So we will be applying the angle bisector theorem now. But remember, this is how you should remember it. Ratio of the sides is equal to the ratio of the basis if the angle bisector is in the middle. Ratio of the sides is equal to ratio of the basis, okay? All right, now let's proceed and talk about the application of the angle bisector theorem in this particular problem. So how do we do it? Well, we start with the picture, one more time, and we already know that AB times BX is equal to AX squared. That, that was the technical condition that was given to us. Now, what else do we know? We know that AB is equal to AC. Why? Because obviously both of them are red eye of the same circle. So this AB is also equal to AC because they are the radius of the same circle. So what I'll do is I'll just replace AB by AC. And I will also write AX as AX, AX square as AX times AX. And you will see in a moment why I'm doing this. Now it's also given that AX is equal to BC because remember this was AX and this was a picture. This AX is given to be equal to BC. So what I'll do is I'll replace one of the AX by BC. So if I do this, I'll have AC times BX is equal to AX times BC because this is AC times BX is equal to AX times BC. Now, if you cross multiply this, you will get AC over BC. So you can take this BC to the downstairs and if you take this BX to downstairs. So you have AC over BC is equal to AX over BX. Notice what I just did. AC over BC is equal to AX over BX. That's what we found using the conditions of our problem. And remember the angle bisector theorem was an if and only if condition. So if we have an angle bisector, then this happens, this AC over BC equal to AX over BX happens. And conversely, if AC over BC over A equal to AX over BX, then, if this is true, then CX is an angle bisector. 
is an angle bisector. It's a very powerful theorem. It's an if and only if theorem. It's true both ways. If the angle bisector is there, then the ratio condition holds. In the, if the ratio condition holds, then that's an angle bisector. Okay. All right. So what we just learned is this particular segment AC, or I'm sorry, CX in this particular case. Okay, maybe I can zoom out a little bit. The CX that we have here, it bisects angle C. So CX right here, CX bisects angle C. So that's a direct application of the angle bisector theorem in our problem. So if this angle is theta, then this is also theta. Of course, you can do more. I mean, this full angle is two theta. So you can do a little bit more angle chasing and this angle is two theta. Okay, so that's there. Now, before we proceed further, I'll just tell you something that you can do from here. You can try to use normal geometry to show that this particular angle is also theta. Because if this angle is theta, if this particular angle is theta, then we have five theta is 180 degree, which means theta is 180 by five, which is 36 degree, exactly what you want to show. So if you can show by simple geometry that this angle A here is equal to one of these two angles, Maybe you can show that CX is equal to AX or something like this. Then this will be an isosceles triangle. And then these two angles will be equal. This one is already theta, so this will be theta. Then you will be done without anything else. So that's the challenge. If you can do this, post your answer in the comment section and tell me how you did it. If not, you can proceed to the next section because remember our goal is not only to solve this problem our goal is to know how to use the tools that we have learned we already use the angle bisector theorem and the next thing that we will be using is the extended pythagoras theorem now this part of the story is in is for is, is reserved for our internal students so if you are an internal student, you can just go to your, log into your uh, website, chinta.com and find the remaining portion of the proof. It's a very beautiful proof. We will talk about the extended Pythagoras theorem. We will pull all the tools together and uh, we will solve this problem. This one is a problem from ISI entrance, as I, as I just said. And it was also um, a problem in a Soviet math Olympiad. Thank you for watching and keep on doing great problems. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.